Hello there guys and today we are going to talk about UMask, okay? And UMask is used to set default permissions. And now I will explain in detail what the UMask does, okay? So again, we are going to talk about default file permissions. We already know that we can change file permissions with the chmod command, but where do default permissions come from exactly? The answer is that the default permissions come from the application that produced the file in question. So if you are producing a file in a certain application, that application is going to set the initial permissions for that file. Then those permissions, which are produced by the application, are modified with UMask, okay? And it is written as UMask. Think of UMask UMask as a bit mask which shuts off certain file permissions. And by bit mask, I mean that we are using bits and bits is just another word for zeros and ones. Okay, and before we delve into this, let me just say that you won't be using UMask much at all, if ever, but it is very illuminating to know how file permissions get set, in my opinion. Okay, so first let's take a look at what my UMask looks like. And I'm just going to press enter. And so my UMask, UMask looks like this. Okay, so I got a zero here, you can ignore uh, the leading zero, you can ignore this leading zero, and then I have zero, and then I have two, and then I have two, okay? So now let's go back to our conceptual board right here, and let me actually take up my graphics tablet and uh, the pen and actually explain to you how this works, okay? So let's take a hypothetical application, for example, some file editing application, which produces files with these permissions. So let's say that the permissions we have are R, W, nothing, R, W, nothing, R, W, nothing. In a binary, that would be expressed as 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, okay? And basically, binary, uh, when I say something is expressed in bits, uh, basically binary is a, sys a system which contains digits one and zero, and the bits are technically related to computer memory. But for these purposes, you can just say when I'm when I say I'm expressing something in bits, that actually means I'm expressing something in terms of ones and zeros. Uh, and you know you can think of it like that. I think I already mentioned it before, but I just want to be clear. Uh, I, I try not to be very tedious with these technical details in these tutorials. So if some of like more experienced people are watching, you're like, hey, you are not really technically correct here. It is not my aim. My aim is to sort of simplify things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you have some feedback on that, definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, would you like more technical, less technical uh, information? And uh, yeah, I'll definitely read through those. Although again, I'll probably pre-record the series, but I will definitely read through it. Okay, so basically what happens is we have the, uh, these permissions and they can be represented as a string of bits, okay? Ones and zeros. Then we can apply uh, our UMask to the default file permissions set by our applications, uh, set by our application to mask certain bits of the file the application produced. Okay, so to remind ourselves, our UMask was actually 0, 2, 2. It was actually 0, 0, 2, 2, but we can ignore this, this uh, leftmost 0, and we can just focus on 0, 2, 2. So 0 is written as 0, 0, 0. These are octal numbers. 2 is written as 0, 1, 0, and 2 is written as 0, 1, 0. So actually, what we are going to have is... 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And so basically, now we come to the interesting part, okay? So what is now going to happen is the places where in the UMask, okay, so this is our UMask. Uh, let me just 
kind of connect these two. Okay, so this is our UMask. The places where there is zero, the permission is going to remain. Okay, so basically here we have a, a one and a zero. Here it is going to remain a one. Here we have a one and a zero. It is going to remain one. Zero and zero, it's going to remain zero. One and zero is going to remain a one. However, here we have a one in the UMask, and that means is that we are going to have a zero here. Okay, so basically, if we have a one in the UMask, those bits are actually going to be switched off in the original file permissions. Okay, so this is going to be zero because we have zero in the UMask, so it's just carried over. Okay, here we also have a zero, so one is carried over. Here we have a one, and so that means that this bit is going to be zero, okay, because the UMask actually has a one here, and here we have zero, zero, so this is going to be zero. Okay, so basically what is happening here is that the UMask is essentially a mask which says, okay, if I have a zero somewhere within me, what, uh, sorry, if I have a one somewhere within me, that means that this bit is going to be set to zero, okay? So basically the final file, permission, file permissions when we apply the UMask look like this. We have read, write, nothing, read, nothing, nothing, and read, nothing, nothing, okay? So this is conceptually what is going on. And if we want to change our UMask, we can just write UMask and then we can write the new mask. Okay, so we can, for example, write 0777 or something like that. Okay, uh, now I'm not really sure. I think you have to provide four, di four octal digits. I'm not really sure if you need to provide four or only three octal digits. That would be something you could look into by typing man, man UMask. And then, like, uh, just you know, seeing, uh, seeing how, uh, seeing how many, um, how many digits you have to provide. If it's here, uh, if it says somewhere here, if it doesn't, uh, or if you have a hard time managing, uh, managing your, uh, if you have a hard time navigating around these man pages, you could Google it. But again, those are some details. And again, I'm not really sure. Uh, do you need to provide the four digits or only three digits? Okay, so that's something you can look up on Google. And I honestly never needed to modify my UMask to be completely transparent. That's why I don't know these details. However, I do know that you can look it up on Google if you ever need to. Uh, but I think it was very illustrative for you to actually understand uh, how uh, permissions get set. Okay, so again, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you learned something. I hope you learned something that that is interesting in this tutorial. And I hope that helped deepen your understanding of the Linux operating system and file permissions. And I will talk to you in the next tutorial. Talk soon.